Welcome back to CCN. It's great to be with you again. This episode, we have an investigation into modern and classic love, highlights from Clash of Classes, Homecoming Neon Night, and more. Let's get to it then. we do have one thing to share that's really important to us. Our girl Jeru, right here, recently achieved something on the basketball court that only an elite group of colonels ever get to accomplish. This season, she reached 1,000 career points as a lady colonel. Congratulations, Jeru. Thank you. Okay. Now onto the main story, striking the matches of love. Love has been in the air recently with Valentine's Day, people getting their matchmaker results, and even with some promposals starting to happen. This got some of our reporters, Joey, Jemiah, and Luke, thinking about how people used to meet and how they meet now, and if much has really changed about how people fall into relationships. According to eHarmony's website, 40% of Americans use dating websites. That's about 133 million people. And more and more dating apps and websites are being created every day. But Pew Research reported in a 2019 study that 57% of people using online dating sites have had positive experiences with their usage. So, if it's a little more than half successful, there has to be a reason people keep coming back. My guess is that it's hard to beat the convenience and hard to deny the what-ifs of finding someone online. Right. Based on the findings from Pew Research, one might conclude that letting an algorithm match you up will have the same rate of success of just meeting people like the olden days. Speaking of which, Jemiah, Joey, and Luke did talk to some of those folks. I'm Jemiah Barham and I'm here with Tracy Rutledge. Okay, so we're talking all about love. How did Aww. you meet your husband? All about love. Mm -hmm. So he, he coached a cheer team out of Lexington, Kentucky, and I coached one out of Lexington, North Carolina. And we went to the same cheer competition in Myrtle Beach. And while we were there, at the, the last night that we were in Myrtle Beach, uh, one of my fourth graders ran, ran up to me and said, you need a man. Mm -hmm. And so she went and found him and brought him to me. And that's, that was the end. The end. Wow, that's awesome, thank you. <laughs> I'm Luke Dalton here with Miss Pedigo. Miss Pedigo, what do you think about online dating? Um, it's different. I just think it's the modern way to date these days. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> I'm here with Mr. Carter. All right, we want to know how you met your wife. Well, I was taking a ceramics class and I thought, man, I'd really like to go out with her didn't feel like I had much of a shot, so I used my artistic talents to try and sculpt her face out of clay, mm -hmm. but it was a bust. I'm here with Connor Mattingly. I'm a math teacher, basketball coach, student ambassador sponsor at Henderson County High School. So our first question we have for you is, how did you find your fiance? I uh, met Alexis through a friend of a friend. We were having some people over at my house to grill out and, you know, be by the pool and hang out with some friends. And so uh, a couple different friend groups came over and um, one actually my best friend met his uh, future wife, his fiance, uh, a couple weekends before. And then she invited Alexis over uh, during the summer. And so we kind of hit it off and then continued to talk throughout the summer. And one thing led to another and now we're engaged. and. Looking forward to be happily married. Okay, awesome. And what do you find your generation's biggest challenge with love to be? Uh, you know, that's a really good question. Uh, as divorce rates throughout the years and over the decades have increased, I think uh, in my generations, I'm 30 years old, uh, I think that social media has been a big challenge for a lot of people. It's introduced. Um, distractions I think and people it's kind of changed people's definition of what love is and you know people are posting things for likes and for affirmation and so I think that that 
feeling of wanting affirmation so quickly and instantly through social media has changed how people value their love because if they don't get what they want in one place, they can just go post something and get that affirmation from anywhere else even though it's not necessarily real. And so I think that people are not as willing to go through the hard times when and, and keep that love and find that love and reinvent it um, as a lot of successful marriages have throughout the years because now if they don't get what they want, they can just go post something on social media or go online and find what they want quickly instead of you know buckling down and uh, like I said, kind of reinventing that love or, or finding that love again. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Our school did a sort of online matchmaking recently where students got to fill out an interest form and sent it in to get results based on others who also did the form. The crew also talked to participants in our own microcosm of matchmaking. Hey guys, I'm here with... Thomas Berger. All right, so we want to know why did you fill out those compatibility test forms? Um, I thought it would be a fun thing to see, like, to see who I'm compatible with and just like, uh, I don't know, to see who throughout the school might match me. That's awesome. Hi, I'm here with Talbot Crafton and... Travis Keelan. All right, so we're talking all about love this week, guys. Who do you guys think that you match with on the compatibility test? Talbot first. I really hope it's Mason. Phillips. Okay, that's good. What about you? Uh, I was hoping it was Mr. Kloss, but uh, I don't know if he did it or not. If him, okay. second place, Mr. Ransom, third place, Mr. Richardson for sure. Fire. What makes me compatible? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Me and Mr. Kloss, we just like the same things. Great. I mean, we hang out all the time. Okay, me okay. And, uh, me and Mr. Ransom do too, but he gets jealous sometimes of how much I hang out with Mr. Kloss. Yeah, so, yeah. You know. I understand. Okay, thanks, guys. Hey, guys, I'm here with. Jordan Wright. So we want to know your thoughts on this generation's problems with love. So in my opinion, I think it's loyalty. Uh, I know a lot of people out there that just aren't loyal. And like even some of my, you know, you know what, I'm saying too much, I'm saying too much. Okay. Thank you. So why did you fill out the compatibility test form? I did it because I thought it would be fun to see who from around the school I'm compatible with. Given what they found, we also asked Joey, Jemiah, and Luke to share their conclusions based on their investigation. What are your final thoughts on this project? So my final thoughts and just some things I learned from doing this project is how love can just be originated from knowing someone for a very long time or it can just be a simple spark. It's not really one concrete way to love, but there's many different ways and many different trials of finding love. Um, I think that we learned that there's a lot of diversity in the way that people receive and give love in our school. I also think that um, there's some really cool stories with our teachers of how they've gotten with their spouses or maybe just the people that they're with. Um, and it's really interesting to just see the different types of um, love shown within the entire school. My final thoughts would be just the different ways that generations have found love. See, with our older teachers, they met in person, they met in class in school, or they met at a public place. But see, with our generation, it's more meet on dating apps. You meet in social media. You meet not as face-to-face. -face. Thank you, Jemiah, Joey, and Luke for reporting on these matters. Hey guys, we're at the race.
Good night. Good. Good. Absolute blast! Absolute blast! This house neon night. It's so much more! Oh my god, so much more! You moved off the house neon night! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> neon night! Jury, how is neon night? It's so lit, dude. Let's glow! Mr. Ransom, are you enjoying neon night? <laughs> Why would you not? This is awesome. What's your favorite part? Uh, just seeing everybody having a great time. Perfect, thank you. Run up this time. Right foot, two steps. That was my left. Right foot, two steps. <laughs> Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Crisscross. Yeah! Turn me up. I'd have to say a 10 out of 10, you know. I feel like I'm 10 years old again. It's a great time. The neon night was definitely lit. I see what you did there. But that's not all that slayed last spirit week. No way. Because we also had the annual epic clash of classes. Roll those highlights. This is clash of classes.
winner of the Clash of Classes, the 2023 Looks like the seniors took a major L. I guess congrats to the juniors. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Colonel Cast. We'll see you again soon. Also, don't forget to check out the Colonel Journal at coloneljournal.net. And make sure you are following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. This is the Colonel Cast. Signing, Signing out. And the others. Okay, are you ready? You have to sit up straight. Please don't laugh. <laughs> I'm not laughing. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Dude, just go. <laughs> You're supposed to be the professional. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> the I professional. Know. Like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Oh god, there's a photo. Okay. Yeah, this guy going on our wall. Slay. <laughs> okay. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. We're waiting on okay. you. Shh. <laughs> The neon night was definitely lit. I see what you did there. But that's not all that slayed last year. Did we answer the Molly? Yeah, we okay. did. Okay. I can hold you Take you under my wonder Over sideways and under